Hello YouTube and welcome to my brand new series of videos where I'll be discussing from the first series of the revival with Christopher Eccleston right up until the time of the Dr. Matt Smith final um, all leading up to the much anticipated series 8 with Peter Capaldi. Well, without further ado, let's just get on to reviewing series 1 shall we? Outside, that's uh, new and fun. Uh, so yeah, let's kick start with Rose. So Rose, for many people like me, it introduced us to Doctor Who and it introduced, uh, well, the Doctor in the 21st century. And for me that was really good because I remember the day Rose aired um, and I was instantly hooked when, as soon as the opening uh, titles were on. I you know I was sort of hooked and when it finished I wanted to see more of who. Um, so the actual story, um, it sort of links in with Spearhead from Space, you know, the first introduction story for a Doctor um, with the Autons. Uh, it's got some good characterisation points for Rose and uh, we sort of see what it's, it's sort of a modern twist, we get to see the companion's sort of daily life and how uh, the companion's life is changed by the Doctor. and. Christopher Eccleston, he's on fine form. I wouldn't say it's his best episode, but definitely um, is one of his strongest uh, episodes, even though it wasn't in my top five. Um, but still, it's a good story. Oh. What? We're inside! And I've changed clothes! Well, could be worse. Right, episode two uh, The End of the World. I nearly forgot the title there. Good start. Now I have to say the end of the world is more of an introduction story for me because it shows you the full capabilities of the TARDIS when it can travel through time and space and it introduces the viewers to a whole variety of aliens and it shows Doc 2 probably at its best in a way showing the full concept of the TARDIS, the Doctor's an alien from Gallifrey and he travels with a person from Earth, normally, and he fights baddies, aliens, what are up to no good, or possibly humans. He humans? Humans, yeah, humans. But yes, End of the World is definitely more of an introduction story. It's definitely got some funny moments with um, Chris Eccleston with the mocks about who going, oh, I bring you air from my lungs. I, I love that bit, that bit always sticks out of, uh, for me, of, from the end of the world. Um, and I also think this is quite a hard-hitting story with his ringing her mom while she watches the earth burn, uh, sort of making the companion sort of really get punched in the chest by the doctor, thing, showing uh, what traveling's like with the doctor, basically. You know, but your relatives are still alive, but you're watching the earth burn. Isn't that nice? Another heart-hitting thing is with Jabe, uh, because the Doctor is sort of quite shocked by, I would say sort of was shocked by what happened to her. Um, and also we learn more of the Doctor character through Jabe sort of interrogating him and we learn about the Doctor's sort of previous travels that he was doing. Uh, with that incarnation, I think it was about the Titanic, I believe, from what I can remember. Um, but yeah, End of the World is definitely a story I'd recommend. Um, so yeah, more of an introduction Episode 3, story. The Unquiet Dead. This story, I have to say, was the first scare factor for me with the Gelf. The bit what gets me is when Mrs. Peace opens her eyes and you know, grabs her grandson's throat. And me and my friend thought, we're, you know, we were about nine, I suppose. Um, 
because we decided to rewatch it because we felt brave. And as soon as that bit came on, we ran out the room. <laughs> Literally, it didn't last long, and we asked my mum to turn the DVD off because it was scaring us. Um, but thankfully, I've grown out of that now, and I can enjoy the story. I think Gatiss um, has done a fantastic job adding the Victorian sort of ghost element with Charles Dickens, making it really work. And I have to say, I mean, I think it was on my top five. I think it was n number four, I think. And it did deserve to be there because it's just a story what really sticks out on my mind. Um, I just can't describe it really. I just love the idea of Look it. At the story with a dark perspective, you can really sort of uh, pick out some of the dark Victorian gooey spooky things. Um, what really make me sort of enjoy it. I mean, I'm not a huge horror fan. Um, I'm quite the opposite really, but little things like that sort of scare me. Um, yeah, I'm quite a scaredy cat. But yeah, Unquiet Dead is fantastic, definitely one of the strongest from series one, um, even though that's quite a Marmite story. Episode four, Aliens of London. Now this story, we see the clash of the Doctor, the oncoming storm against Jackie Tyler. Who would win? Jackie, of course biggest gob in the Powell estate. Um, yeah, this is where we really get the sort of side effects of travelling with the Doctor. The Doctor thought she had been gone for 12 hours, uh, but really Rose has been gone for 12 months. And uh, uh, Series 1 is very much showing uh, the series from the companion side with the Doctor sort of influencing her uh, throughout the series. Um, but this story I find is really, really good. It's a strong first part for the first two-parter of the revival. Um, the bit what makes me sort of a bit sad is a space pig. I'm, I got to admit I was quite sad when he died. I like the space pig. Um, but the cliffhanger, oh, it's good. It is fantastic. It is Doctor Who. It's a proper Doctor Who cliffhanger. The Doctor's in mortal peril, and there's nothing he can do. Only just go. Brilliant. Um, I, as a seven-year-old kid, when I first watched it, I was like, is Doctor One next week? Overall, The Aliens of London is a fantastic story. Okay, so now on to episode five, World War Three, the concluding part of the two-parter. Now, this is fantastic because we see the Slovene at their full sort of madness. I love the concept of the Slovene using something human-like farting. And it becomes rather sinister. I mean, the only downside with this living in this episode is when they're running across uh, the corridors. The CGI looks a bit dated now. Um, it looked a bit dated then, actually. Um, but the Sarah Jane adventures have sort of ruined them in a way. Um, but, yeah, I just think it's really good. I mean, I forgot to mention that Harriet Jones uh, was introduced in this two-parter. And she'll become a regular feature in the two part, well, the Russell T. Davis era. I just think it's a really good story. I think overall it's brilliant with Slivine. Overall, a quite a sinister monster, even though they may not look it. Uh, but Chris Freckleston and Billy Piper are fantastic. And also, Mickey and Jackie get a bit more characterisation with Mickey actually doing something instead of being the sort of sulking boyfriend. So I think it's a really good that those two characters actually did get something to bite their teeth into in the story and actually develop further um, into a 3D character, not a 2D character. Episode 6, Dalek. This is a fantastic story, it's brilliant. Um, I have to say, the scene with um, Chris Freckleston and the Dalek in the cage was just brilliant and you could see the pain in Christopher Eccleston and you can see his tone really darken and, and I think that shows his darker side of his Doctor and it's just a fantastic story. The Dalek itself, it showed the power of the Daleks. Power, of, yeah. Yeah, 1960s story, but power of the Dalek, let's do this because there's only one Dalek in it. It showed the strength of the Dalek. It showed that they took no mercy. It would kill everyone in sight, but of course its downfall was pity. And, of course, I'm not going to spoil the ending, 
Henry Van Staten is quite an evil sort of side villain, I suppose, um, being this sort of mad eccentric sort of collector. And it, it's just overall a very strong story, and I highly recommend that one if you haven't actually watched it because it is just a fantastic story and you really do get a good feel for the Ninth Doctor. Episode 7 of The Long Game. Now this sort of saw the sort of rather forgettable companion Adam Mitchell uh, join the TARDIS for one adventure. We saw him in Dalek, I forgot to mention. But yes, this is uh, sort of meant to be the dip in series one, and I sort of can agree. I mean, it's it's an average story. It has Simon Pegg in it, which is quite nice. The concept is really nice. It introduces us to Satellite 5, which I would say is quite a main part for series one because it's used in the finale so I think it's quite a big thing for the series itself and I think it's quite an interesting concept with uh, clicking your fingers and this weird head thing and you can see your brain it's, I just find it rather odd and the Jagrafess is quite an odd monster uh, really um, but it's, it's an average story, it's one you sort of want to leave till last really um, okay so now on to Father's Day, Father's Day is sort of a time meddling story, you know, if you save someone who died, was meant to die on that day what would the consequences be? And the Reapers, the monsters in that story are just brilliant, I love the idea of them and it's a really good story uh, The Doctor sort of is sort of the third main character, the first being Rose because we're seeing it uh, through her point of view obviously and the second character is Pete Tyler uh, I would say this is a Doctor-like story because something does happen to him. Uh, so, yeah, I, it's a character story for Rose. It's more development for her and more characterization. And we, it sort of um, answers a few questions we had about the character and what happened to uh, Pete himself. And there's a good line at the start, you know, be careful what you wish for because it might come true and I just I think it was you might come true I don't, I'm not sure I, I know it was uh, be careful what you wish for but yeah it's just a brilliant line and it sort of sets up the adventure okay so now on to the two-parter the empty child and the doctor dance I think this is a fantastic two-parter overall it's a strong creepy using gas mask you know using an everyday item from that time zone and merging it with a child because you know with evacuations you know people children being lost wandering around uh, because of the bombs so they would leave and obviously some would uh, get lost and sort of become poor lost sort of souls I think that's a good idea by Moffat and I just think it's done rather well it introduces us to Captain Jack now I have to say I prefer Captain Jack in series one I don't really like him in any of the series because I just find him a bit more cheesy and just rather annoying and sort of great with Tennant and I'll probably explain that um, in series 3 but it's a fantastic story and I just think the ending is beautiful you know that the Doctor isn't about death wherever he goes you know there can be beauty and it, you know just this once everybody lives it's just beautiful to end up a beautiful two-parter and the cliffhanger uh, for the Empty Child is fantastic um, uh, with Richard Wilson's uh, character Dr. Constantine uh, sort of face breaking forming a gas mask it's just horror and it's done brilliantly uh, now on to the sort of second flop of the series I suppose uh, Boomtown but this is actually a guilty pleasure of mine um, I go into this more detail so if you want to know more about Boomtown check out my guilty pleasure video but um, could you take someone out for dinner and then be there execute well could you take someone out for dinner and execute them in the morning be their executioner basically I just find that a rather odd idea and there's it's rather a good story you know it's it's got a right balance of humor and sort of dark undercurrents of you know the doctor being uh, this great sort of godlike character you know deciding fate over uh blonde day, day 
Slovene, I don't know, I can't remember her name, sorry. Um, with the, well, the humour element comes with them actually sort of on a date in a way, that's strange. Uh, with the little poison dart and the Christopher Eccleston with the mouth spray just going, Shh, ah, better. Um, it's, I find it an enjoyable story. So now on to the grand finale. Hey, so what are my thoughts one? on the finale? The finale, I think, is a beautiful sort of ending to the series. I love the sort of twist with uh, the game shows being to turn out to be something quite sinister and evil. Again, using some sort of everyday sort of reality TV shows and sort of twisting on their head and sort of making them rather sinister. And I just think it's brilliant. Uh, parting of the ways. Well, the cliffhanger for Bad Wolf is really good and is fantastic. Parting the way, he sees the return of the Emperor Dalek, um, last seen in Evil of the Daleks, and it was really nice to see a sort of updated version, I suppose, of the Dalek Emperor. It was really nice to see that. And I have to say, Christopher Eccleston, I have to say, gives probably the best performance, especially when him and the Emperor uh, confront each other and when he's got the big lever to destroy um I can't remember but he's you know when he's you know coward or Dalek or something like that I think. Um I think that's just fantastic really. Um the Daleks are quite um strong in this story. Um I mean this two part we see a potential uh, companion Linda with a Y. Um and her death is quite shocking in a way because it's quite horrifying, you know, but you just see the Daleks come up against the glass and just you see the dome lights flash saying exterminate and then boom and then just hear a scream and you can obviously tell what happened to her. And I just think the Daleks in series one are probably at their best, really. I, I keep praising praising the Daleks in this because they are really fantastic in this. Um Billy Piper gives a strong performance um, but she is she is sort of annoying when she's on earth but when she's the sort of bad wolf character um, she is quite good really um, with a sense of sort of power um, in the performance um, I'm going to talk about the regeneration the regeneration um, was quite shocking as a seven year old watching it um, because I just saw my doctor, my first ever doctor, just gone in the blink of an eye. And I was quite upset really about that um, because I didn't know the concept of regeneration. So I was just like, where's my doctor gone? So overall, the two-parter is my favourite from series one. It's just brilliant words, kind of describe it. If you want to know more about uh, that story, check out my top five ninth doctor stories. Uh, so I better conclude the... Uh, conclude series one. Series one is a fantastic series in the words of a ninth doctor, huh, pun. Uh, um, but it is a beautiful series because we see the lifespan of that doctor in the space of 13 weeks. And Christopher Eccleston will always be the special doctor for me because he was the first. Um, I think the characters are very relatable so therefore you are already engaged in the series itself with Rose being on the council estate. It's not, you know, sort of people you would expect to be in the TARDIS really so I think it does contrast uh, previous companions such as Liz Shaw and uh, Charlotte Pollard uh, from Big Finish you know being this Edwardian uh, well, -do, uh, well to do character really so I think it does contrast having a an everyday sort of um, character uh, being the companion uh, so yeah I've highlighted Christopher Eccleston the writing is beautiful there, there really isn't a bad story. I mean, the stories that range from average to brilliant, really. They are fantastic. Definitely do check out Series 1 because it is one of the strongest series uh, from the revival. Uh, it is my second favourite. I'm not going to say what is my first because I'll just spoil it. Uh, so, yes, Series 1 is definitely a recommendation. Christopher Eccleston is fantastic. Um, and, yeah, he definitely inspired me to get into... Doctor Who, I mean, I used to dress up as Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, that, 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 I'm not going to talk about that, really. <laughs> so that was quite odd, uh, me doing that. 
and I'd used to recreate the regeneration scene um, and just run around the garden pretending Daleks were chasing me and stuff. Yeah, that's that's my childhood in a nutshell. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching my Series 1 review. I'll see you in my Series 2 review, which will be up um, hopefully um, pretty soon after this. So hopefully you are enjoying this uh, brand new series. And uh, tell me your thoughts on Series 1 because I think it is fantastic and beautiful. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this review and I'll see you next time. So for now, goodbye.